All right, again, this is the, the next part of our liftgate system uh, PM. This is the battery box, pump box. All right, I'll pop this cover out. All right, you can see we got both of our batteries here. There's usually two batteries hooked up in parallel to run the lift gate. Get a light in here. Okay, so now we have four wires. This is the harness that's coming from the nose box. Four wires coming out of that harness. There's a thicker gauge black and white wire. That's where the charging system voltage uh, is coming to the to the batteries from and then there's a yellow wire which is the ignition in the back there is a DC to DC converter can't get a really good shot of it but that's what boosts the voltage uh, uh, for the uh, for the liftgate batteries that's kind of the the uh, selling point for the uh, perky system um, so again we have four wires black and white black and white are the ground and the positive charging system wires the yellow is the ignition, so the, the power source, what powers up the DC to DC converter in the back. And then that orange wire, the orange wire is taking liftgate battery voltage and sending it up to the faceplate, and that's what's making that liftgate battery light blink yellow or green. So knowing that that liftgate battery light is blinking green, we can be confident if we hooked our meter up to this, these batteries that it, uh, it'd be over 12.4 volts. Okay, if on the faceplate you don't have any light for the liftgate battery indicator, if it's not blinking green or orange, there is a two amp fuse right here that goes uh, in line between the batteries and the nose box. And if you don't have any light at all, I would check this fuse, this two amp fuse first uh, to make sure that's good. Uh, if you still don't have a light on there, your Perky's faceplate might be bad something to check out so while we're in here again we're gonna be checking all the connections on here to make sure they're tight and corrosion free if there's corrosion we're gonna take them apart clean them off and put dielectric grease on them all right we're gonna take a look at all the other wiring in here again making sure everything's tight we have our uh, battery hold down Make sure that's tight so our batteries aren't sliding all around. Um, and so the next thing we're gonna do after we look at this wiring again, making sure that's a big thing, corrosion, and making sure that the uh, all the, the terminals are tight. Uh, but after this, we're going to be taking uh, the cables off to do a load test. Now, I don't think if it's just one battery, I don't think it's really necessary to take the cables off. I've already done a load test on a battery uh, with the cables on, as long as there's nothing using power, I, I think it's accurate enough. But since we have two batteries hooked up in parallel, we're gonna be disconnecting the batteries from each other. Uh, so when we do the load test, we're only testing out one battery instead of uh, both of them. Okay, we got the battery cables off and we're gonna test out these batteries using this uh, Foxwell battery analyzer. If you have one of those old uh, carbon pile load testers, those work well too. All right, black lead on the negative terminal of the battery, red lead on the positive. Make sure you got a good connection, that's important. All right, you can see we got 12.44 volts on the battery. And we're gonna go to the uh, battery test. We have a 12 volt system. It is in vehicle. We have a top post, not side post. This is a regular uh, flooded battery. We don't have AGL or uh, AGL, AGM or gel battery in here. CCA, so how many cold cranking amps uh, the battery is rated for. It's usually printed on the top of the battery. I know from doing these before, it's 950. Okay. Battery temperature, we are above zero degrees Celsius, thankfully. Okay, and you see it says good recharge. It means we have a good battery, but it's telling us to recharge the battery because we only have, what it would say there, 12.44 volts. So a good charge bat battery is gonna have 12.6. So that little five minute that I had the, uh, the uh, reefer running to charge this thing up wasn't enough to charge it up enough, but it, enough that it's over 12.4 to make that light green. Okay, so we had uh, one good battery. We will test the same thing on the other battery. Alright, 
good battery voltage. Test total volt in vehicle top post regular CCA 950. Okay, and as you can see, this other battery has 12.45 volts. Uh, again, it says it's a good battery, um, but it does uh, need to be charged up. So out of the 950 uh, cold cranking amps, it's uh, rated for, wait till it comes back up, uh, tested at uh, 744. So both these batteries are good. All right, with the uh, load test done, now we're ready to put our cables back on. But before I do, I wanted to quickly go over uh, the way the batteries are wired up. This is pretty important. If you wire it up wrong, you can have a big problem. So the batteries uh, on the lift gate are hooked up in parallel. So we have two 12 volt batteries. When they're hooked up in parallel, the positive post from one battery is hooked up to the positive post on the other battery. And the negative post from one battery is hooked up to the negative post on the other battery. And when we do this, we grab our meter, put it on DC voltage. All right, and put our meter leads on the battery. Hopefully you can see that. There's 12.37 volts. So even though we have two 12 volt batteries, it's not adding up for uh, 24 in a parallel circuit. When they're hooked up like this, the benefit is the capacity. Having two pat batteries gives you more capacity. The lift gate will work just fine. You can have one battery hooked up to this thing and it'll work just fine. It just won't last as long as it would if it had two batteries on it. The two batteries doesn't give it extra power. It gives it extra capacity. Now, if you wanted more power, if you had a, a, a lift gate that was a 24 volt system, we could wire this up differently. We could take out these, these cables and instead of connecting the positive to positive and negative to negative, we could take a cable and go from the positive terminal of one battery and go to the negative. I don't wanna stay on there. Negative of another uh, battery. Now, if we check the output of this battery, negative lead here, positive lead here. Now you can see we have 24 volts. So when you hook it up in series, it doubles the voltage, but it, uh, it reduces the capacity. So that's why we have them set up the way we do. So again, we want to take this off. We don't want this uh, system going in. Uh, we put 24 volts of that motor. I don't know what's going to happen, but I don't want to find out. So hook it up the way it's supposed to be. Again, we're going to take these two little patch cables, positive to positive, negative to negative. All right. And now we need the output out to the, to the pump box. So this short wire right here, this is the negative. This negative lead goes in here and it just goes to the manifold block. It just gets grounded to, uh, to the manifold block. Um, and all the other components in there, again, are, are grounded. Um, so it all goes through, uh, back through this cable. So we're gonna put that one there. And then we have our positive cable. So if we trace out, so this positive cable is the one that eventually goes out through to the pump box. So if we trace out this positive cable right here, First thing it goes to is this master disconnect switch, which shuts off power to the, to the pump box. From here, it goes into this 150 amp breaker and that 150 amp breaker is kind of protecting this, this battery box. Comes out of the 150 amp breaker and out to the pump box. All right. So this one right here, we're gonna hook up to this uh, positive terminal on this battery. All right, so as it's hooked up right now, the lift gate will work fine. Both of these batteries are hooked up. The charging system isn't hooked up at all, but it'll still work, but it'll just work until the batteries, you know, get completely depleted. So now we have to hook up the charging system. The charging system, uh, once it comes out of that DC to DC converter, it's got two cables. It's got a positive cable and it's got a negative cable. It's important when you put these cables on here that you go caddy corner, so you go so right here, this is the negative battery terminal. So we're gonna put that on negative. So I wanna put the positive battery terminal on the opposite battery positive, okay? It'll work just, I mean, it's not reaching. They made it like this, so you can't do it. 
But if I would put the positive cable on here, it would work fine. But when you go to use the batteries on the lift gate, when you go to cycle the batteries, because of the way it's hooked up, it would cycle this battery. And then when it goes to charge, it would fill this battery up first and it won't start charging this battery until this one's charged up. So by putting your battery cables caddy corner here, you force the batteries to charge up equally. So they both get depleted and then they both get charged up equally. Uh, again, if you have them both here, it would work, but it would just charge this battery up first and then the overflow would start charging up this battery. And it's just, you end up cycling one battery more and more than the other one. And then you have one bad battery and the other one's good and you just end up chasing batteries. So good practice to put them positive on uh, one battery uh, and the negative cable on the opposite battery. Okay, get our nuts back on here. Okay, now that we're done checking out the battery box, we're gonna move over to the pump box. Take this cover off. All right. Now, I like these Waltco WDVs, especially these single uh, pump units. Uh, there's not a lot going on in here, so it's very easy to, to kind of chase down the problem so you don't have double the set of wires and hoses everywhere. So, um, so this is the pump box. Here is the motor, the pump, that drives the oil and here's the hydraulic reservoir. So you want to check how much oil is in the tank and everyone is different and you got to look at the you got to look at the manual. But if you look, it says right here, checking the oil level in the reservoir, check the oil with the platform fully raised and in the open position. Oil should be within 3 inches below the top of the reservoir. The reason why they tell you that the cylinders have to be in a certain position and right now we have it all the way up but we don't have the platform extended. You know, it takes oil to go to these cylinders to make them operate, obviously. So if you had the platform all the way down, for example, the oil that it would have taken from the reservoir to make those cylinders go down. So if you had the cylinders the whole way down and then you went and checked the hydraulic oil and you see, oh man, I'm six inches away from the top. You went and filled it up three inches from the top and then lifted your lift gate uh, back up the oil that's coming out of those cylinders and being displaced back into the tank is probably gonna overfill that reservoir and you'll have a big mess. So make sure you check it and Maxons are different. I forget what they are. I believe it's all the way up with the platform folded, but for these Waltcos, it's platform the whole way up and uh, deck extended. So we're gonna take this lift gate and you see one of the other things that we're gonna write up when we uh, do the rest of the PM, but this uh, travel latch keeper, a little piece of metal that comes up and down is missing in here. Also, this uh, travel latch ear is bent down pretty bad, uh, which makes uh, stowing these things a lot harder. So, you'll lift it up out of that travel latch, pressing up on the toggle switch. All right, and then we're gonna unfold. That's up on the toggle switch and forward with this one. I just wanna make sure everyone's clear this lift gate before you unfold it all right lift gates the whole way up at deck at, at a trailer height and it's unfolded so now according to the manual we should be three inches away from the top of the reservoir hard to see sometimes a flashlight helps you out there but you can see where we're uh far lower than three inches from the top of the of the reservoir. So this one's gonna need some oil. All right, we got our hydraulic oil here. We're gonna add it in, take off this cap. Make sure this cap here, not only uh, to keep the moisture out, which is really, really important, but it also acts as a breather. Pop that in.
Hey, look at that. About three inches from the top at the precise, precise moment that we run out of oil. So that worked out. All right, don't forget to put your cap back on. All right, so now the oil is at a good level. All right, so some of the other things that we should uh, take a look at. So again, coming in from the battery box, we have the we have the positive and negative cable right here. The positive goes into another 150 amp breaker. This one's a resettable breaker. Um, so if it trips, you can just push a button in and reset it. All right, and that feeds our motor starter right here, the solenoid. And notice the wiring that's feeding all of this is all thicker gauge wiring. It's two watt wiring, all of the battery connections over here, all those cables are, are two watt connecting the batteries. That's because all the high amperage stuff happens literally like right here, all right? So the motor um, and uh, the pump, that's what's drawing the, uh, the high amount of amperage. So they need that high amperage uh, circuit breaker, 150 uh, amps. Um, to protect the circuit because it normally has, you know, I don't know how much, 100, 120, uh, 130 amps running through this thing. So this is protecting uh, the pump box here. Uh, the other thing we have, if we go back, we have this uh, 150 amp breaker kind of protecting the battery box here. There is uh, another piece of circuit protection in here. There's a 30 amp circuit breaker, uh, a resettable one, uh, and this is protecting the charging system coming off of the DC to DC converter. So those are all spots you want to check for uh, corrosion. All right, so a negative uh, cable comes in here, and like I said, it's it's bolted to the manifold block of the uh, of the uh, pump. All right, so we got 12 volts coming in right here. So I put my meter lead right here, uh, positive, and I put my negative meter lead on ground somewhere. Uh, I should have 12 volts sitting right there waiting to pass through to the motor and the thing that signals it to pass through or that opens up the gateway um, is someone hitting the switches uh, either the uh, ground switches or the uh, platform switch that tells these solenoids to open up and also sends power to the to the motor to these terminals which opens up the gateway and allows the motor or rather the, the power to flow to the motor and it runs the uh, the pump. Again, there's not too much to check out here. Just make sure that, uh, as far as just on a, a PM side of it, make sure that uh, all of these, like I said, these uh, solenoids right here, these are self-grounding solenoids. So the 12 volt positive power comes in here. So when you hit a switch saying, I wanna go up, um, it will provide power to this uh, solenoid valve one. So you'll have, you won't quite have 12 volts. Um, it'll be a little bit less because the motor will be running, um, but that'll open up this, uh, uh pathway in the uh in the solenoid and it'll divert the oil from one direction to another and cause the lift gate uh to go up all right these solenoid valves right here these again are activated when you're operating the switches either on the platform switch or the ground switch um, and it's sending voltage to one or more of these um to get the oil to divert the way you want it to um, but all of these are powered by this uh, 20 amp, uh, it's either 15 or 20, I forget, but um, I believe it's a 20 amp circuit breaker. Um, so all of the control switch wiring, so these two wires right here, this one's for the uh, ground switch that does up, down, fold and unfold. And this one is for the platform switch, the one that just goes up and down. Um, they're all controlled by this breaker right here. If I'd cut the wire right here, none of your control switch wiring would work at all. Um, so if you ever have a problem with control switch wiring not working at all, like if it goes up, um, but not like fold or unfold, uh, your, your problem wouldn't be your breaker because just the fact that it's going up means that that breaker's okay. Um, but if it's not working at all at the, at the control switch side of it, I'd check out this breaker uh, and see what's going on. If, it's, if, it's, uh, if the breaker's fried, most likely you have a short to ground somewhere else and it just kept resetting and then finally it just fried in the open position. Um, but that's where to look for that. All right, so you can see the wiring is much thinner. You know, this is yeah, 14 gauge, 16 gauge wiring going to the control switch wiring, whereas for the motor and uh, the pump, you know, it's this thick two watt, two gauge wiring here, okay? Some other things to call out in the pump box. We have a pressure gauge. This is nice. 
Um, uh, this is something I've only seen on the Waltcos. The Maxon ones I've seen don't have this pressure gauge, but um, if you have something, uh, someone operating the switch, you can look at how many PSI you have in uh, pressure. And uh, if you look in uh, the manual, it says there's a certain amount of pressure for going up, there's a certain amount of pressure for going down, and if it goes over that pressure, then that relief valve that's plumbed into that circuit kicks in and dumps that excess excessive oil back to back the tank. That way when you're going up on the lift gate and you keep your, your finger on the switch and it keeps going up, you don't blow a hydraulic hose or blow the seals out of the, uh, out of the cylinder. Um, that relief valve is what um, stops that from happening. Okay, so again, we have that 20 amp breaker. There's two uh, little uh, cube relays right here. You always wanna check these out. I mean, like any kind of problem on a lift gate, you know, you always want to take into consideration corrosion. I'm going to pull this off. It's really tight. But I'm not sure if you can see that, but you can even see it right here. I mean, there's a little bit of corrosion right there. Um, you know, water gets in these things, and it's very hard to, to keep the corrosion out of it. So connector maintenance and, you know, good electrical practices will go a long way. We got a little cycle counter right here. Um, by the way, on some models, Maxon specifically, they do have oil filters um, that they require you to uh, service every uh, number of cycles or uh, amount of hours. Um, these Waltcos, uh, the Lisa style, don't, don't have the filters, but just something to keep in mind um, if you have that style. Okay, now that we've checked over the uh, visual inspection on the uh, pump box, we're gonna go through and look at the routing of the hoses and the control switch wiring to make sure that it's routed properly going back to the lift gate. All right, so again, these two right here, this is the, the, the harness for the ground switch. This is the harness for the plat platform switch, the one you control when you're actually on the lift gate. And these four hoses are for the hydraulics of the lift gate. These two thicker ones are for the up-down cylinders and these two smaller ones are for the fold cylinder. All right, this looks pretty good. If you look here, you know, everything's uh, loomed. Uh, they have beam clips going to these uh, cross members here and everything securely wire tied uh, up to the cross members. What you don't wanna see is a bend in here. This little, this, this, this gradual bend here is fine, but you don't wanna have a bend like this. Like you wouldn't want anything more than six inch bend because uh, if you ever look at a hydraulic hose when someone's actually operating it, it, it flexes. Uh, and if you have too much of a bend in there, uh, it can cause some uh, drag in the, in the hoses. Plus you can cause a uh, strain on whatever's holding it and it can break away. All right, so we're gonna look at the routing through the cross members, make sure that everything's securely attached. All right, everything looks good. Now the next thing is this hose guide. This is super important. I've seen people install these and they have this hose guide. And this hose guide is protecting the hoses and the electric lines, you know, going back uh, while it's crossing over the tires, uh, over the tandems. If this thing isn't perfectly centered in between the tires, if it's off a little bit, like if it's off here about three inches, when this suspension kind of bottoms out, that tire is going to rub up against, and we've seen it before, it's going to rub up against the guard, and then it may, eventually rubs through, makes a very sharp part on the guard, slices through the tire, and then a tire recap, or the tire is flapping around, and it could grab the hydraulic oil. And then you got hydraulic oil all over ground. That's a major thing right there, is having the hose guide on there and having it centered. So you don't, it's not enough just to have it wire tied to the cross members going through. Um, you definitely want this thing protected as it goes over the tires. All right, so check the hose guide, see if it, you know, this one's mono bolted, if it's welded or whatever, just make sure it's in good condition and it's not rusted through. And you see right here, a little bit of a buff mark on this right here, not something I'd be concerned with. It still looks like it's pretty, pretty centered there. Um, but when these things get out of center, you know, that, like I said, it'll rub up against there and it just tears up the tires. All right, going through and making sure nothing's loose. All right, and we're gonna check the connectors uh, as it exits the hose guide and goes out to the cylinders and to the switches. All right, make sure everything's 
secure, nothing hanging, nothing's gonna get caught as they're backing away from the dock. A little loose there, we can take care of that.